Hello, welcome to another episode of Arthritis and You, A Joint Journey. Today, we've got something special lined up, so buckle up because it's time for the deep dive. Let's give a warm welcome to our hosts, Arthur and Sarah. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're uh, we're diving into the world of glucocorticoids. You've probably heard of them. Oh, yeah. They're often just called steroids. And uh, we're going way beyond the sports headlines right. to understand these powerful medications. Our guide for this deep dive is this uh, fascinating web page from the Alberta Rheumatology website. Okay. Now, before you think, wait, I don't live in Alberta. Yeah. This isn't just for Canadians. Right. The science of how these medications work is universal, and that's what we're really after. Absolutely. Think of this as your crash course on glucocorticoids. Yeah. What they are, how they work, what they treat, and uh, what to watch out for. Sounds good. So let's unpack this. What exactly are E glucocorticoids, and how do they differ from, say, the kind of steroids athletes get in trouble for? Yeah, you're right to make that distinction because they're actually totally different categories. The ones making sports headlines are anabolic steroids, which uh, primarily influence muscle growth. Glucocorticoids, on the other hand, are all about controlling inflammation. They're synthetic versions of a natural hormone your body produces called cortisol. Cortisol. Is, is, isn't that the stress hormone? Yeah. What does that have to do with inflammation? You got it. Cortisol is involved in a ton of bodily processes, mm -hmm. but one of its key roles is keeping your immune system in check. See, when your body senses a threat, like an injury or infection, it triggers inflammation as part of its defense mechanism. Cortisol acts like a regulator, preventing that inflammation from going overboard. So glucocorticoids are like cortisol's like superhero alter ego, stepping in with even more power when needed. And the Alberta Rheumatology website lists a whole range of conditions these superhero medications can treat. We've got inflammatory types of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, vasculitis, even something called polymyalgia rheumatica. Yeah, yeah. yeah that one's a mouthful. What exactly I, I polymyalgia rheumatica and how do glucocorticoids help? So polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR, is a prime example of how inflammation, the body's natural defense mechanism, can sometimes backfire. It primarily affects people over 50 and causes severe pain and stiffness in the shoulders and hips, often making even the simplest movements incredibly difficult. Imagine struggling to get out of bed in the morning because your body feels like it's been hit by a truck. That's the reality for many PMR patients. Ah, uh, that sounds rough. It can be. The exact cause of PMR is still a bit of a mystery, but we know that it involves the immune system mistakenly attacking the lining of the joints, leading to uh, that debilitating inflammation. Yeah. That's where glucocorticoids come in. They essentially hit the pause button on this immune system overreaction, bringing down the inflammation and providing significant relief. In fact, for many PMR patients, glucocorticoids are literally life-changing, allowing them to regain mobility and get back to doing the things they love. That's amazing. It really highlights how targeted these medications can be. Now, I know glucocorticoids are available in different forms like pills and injections. What's the difference and why the variety? It all comes down to speed and target. Oral glucocorticoids like prednisone work quickly. We're talking as little as 30 minutes because they're absorbed into your bloodstream and spread throughout your entire body. This makes them incredibly effective for widespread inflammation, like what you see in conditions like PMR or severe allergic reactions. So if you need fast acting, widespread relief, oral glucocorticoids are the way to go. But what about those joint injections? When are those used? Joint injections are like a sniper, delivering the medication directly to the source of the problem, the inflamed joint itself. Let's say you have a particularly stubborn case of knee osteoarthritis, and it's causing you a great deal of pain and limiting your mobility. In that case, a glucocorticoid injection directly into the knee joint can provide targeted relief. So it's like a direct hit, going right where it's needed most. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier that joint injections can take a bit longer to kick in than oral glucocorticoids. Yeah. Uh. Why is that? It seems counterintuitive that targeting the problem area directly would be slower. That's a great question, and it highlights how these medications actually work on a cellular level. You see, sometimes glucocorticoids provide fast-acting relief by directly reducing inflammation. Think of it like dousing a fire. Other times, they're working more behind the scenes to modify your immune response, and that takes a bit longer to have a noticeable effect. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But this brings up something that I know many listeners are probably wondering about side effects. Right. And I have to admit, whenever I hear the word steroids, my mind immediately jumps to potential downsides. Yeah, it's true. 
Glucocorticoids are powerful medications, and with that power comes the potential for side effects. But it's crucial to remember that these side effects really depend on how the medication is administered. Okay. Injection versus oral, the dosage, and the duration of treatment. Right. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. So let's break it down, starting with those joint injections. The source mentions that serious complications are pretty rare. They really are. The chance of a serious complication, like an infection from a joint injection, is incredibly low, about 1 in 10,000. Of course, any medical procedure carries some risk, but with proper sterile techniques, these risks are minimized. That's good to know. What about more common side effects? What can someone expect after a joint injection? You might see some temporary side effects around the injection site. Things like slight skin discoloration or some temporary thinning of the skin or fat tissue. Some people also experience a temporary increase in pain and inflammation right after the injection. Almost like their body is saying, hey, what was that? Interesting. So it's like a little bump in the road before things get better. The source also recommends icing the injection site. Right. Why does that help? Think of icing as a way to soothe the initial shock the joint might experience after the injection. It helps constrict blood vessels, which reduces inflammation and swelling. It's a simple but effective way to minimize discomfort and speed up the healing process. Good to know. Okay, so we've covered the localized risks of injections, but what happens when you take these medications orally? That's where the potential impact widens, right? Exactly. When you take oral glucocorticoids, they're absorbed into your bloodstream and travel throughout your entire body, which means their effects, both good and bad, are more widespread. The source seems to have a much longer list of potential side effects for oral glucocorticoids, like prednisone. Can you walk us through those? Sure. Let's start with the short-term side effects, which are usually manageable, especially at lower doses. Many people experience things like sleep disturbances, weight gain due to increased appetite and fluid retention, and even mood changes, feeling irritable or anxious. Wow. I had no idea it could even mess with your sleep. It's true, and that's why taking the medication at a specific time of day is usually recommended. But while those short-term side effects can be bothersome, the more concerning ones are those associated with long-term use. And those would be? We're talking about things like thinning of the skin, making it more susceptible to bruising, muscle weakness, especially in the upper arms and thighs, a higher risk of infections due to the suppression of the immune system, osteoporosis, weakening of the bones, and even an impact on your body's own natural cortisol production. Okay. That I ask a lot to process. It makes you wonder, if there are all these potential downsides, why even USE glucocorticoids in the first place? That's a question I hear a lot from patients, and it's an important one. The truth is, for many people with chronic inflammatory conditions, the benefits of glucocorticoids far outweigh the risks. So it's all about carefully weighing those benefits against the risks. Exactly. It's a balancing act, and that's why working closely with a rheumatologist is crucial. They can determine the lowest effective dose for the shortest amount of time, carefully monitor for any side effects, and make adjustments as needed. It sounds like uh, personalized treatment is key when it comes to glucocorticoids. Yeah. Speaking of which, are there things people can do proactively to kind of manage those potential side effects. Absolutely. The Alberta Rheumatology website emphasizes, you know, the importance of a healthy lifestyle in conjunction with glutocorticoid treatment. Okay. This includes things like uh, keeping an eye on your calorie intake and salt consumption to, you know, manage weight gain and fluid retention. Right. And uh, making sure you're getting enough calcium and vitamin D, especially if you're at risk for osteoporosis. Right. Because glucocorticoids can increase that risk. Exactly. So it's like giving your body some extra support while it's uh, getting this powerful medication. Exactly. It's all about working with your body, not against it. Okay, one last thing from the source that really stood out to me. The huge E warning about stopping glucocorticoids abruptly. They even put very dangerous in bold. Yeah, and for good reason. Yeah. Remember how we talked about your body producing its own cortisol? Right. Well, when you take glucocorticoids for a while, especially at higher doses, your body starts to rely on that external source and may decrease its own cortisol production. So if you suddenly yank away those glucocorticoids, what happens? Your body can go into what we call adrenal insufficiency, also known as an adrenal crisis. Okay. It's like suddenly cutting off the supply line when your body's used to relying on it. It's crucial to give your adrenal glands time to kind of ramp up their own cortisol production again. So it's like weaning yourself off, not going cold turkey. Exactly. That's why it's so important to work with your doctor to develop a safe tapering schedule. They'll gradually reduce your dose over time, giving your body a chance to adjust and um, 
preventing any nasty withdrawal symptoms. Wow. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. It's amazing how much there is to learn about something you might have just heard of as steroids. Right. It really shows you shouldn't judge a medication by its simplified name. Yeah. Glucocorticoids are powerful tools, but like any tool they need to be used correctly and with respect for their potential impact. So to wrap things up for our listeners, what are the key takeaways about glucocorticoids? First and foremost, glucocorticoids are incredibly effective at treating a wide range of inflammatory conditions, often providing significant relief and improving quality of life. However, they're not without risks, especially with long-term use. That's why working closely with a healthcare professional is essential to ensure these medications are used safely and effectively. And remember, knowledge is power. Understanding how these medications work, what to watch out for, and how to uh, manage potential side effects can make a world of difference in your treatment experience. Now, as you go about your day, here's a little something to ponder. We've talked about how glucocorticoids can suppress the body's own cortisol production, especially with long-term use. So here's a question for you. How might this impact the body's ability to handle stress in the long run? It's something to think about. And if today's deep dive sparked your curiosity about glucocorticoids, don't stop here. There's a whole world of information out there waiting to be explored. Until next time, keep those brains engaged. This has been another episode of Arthritis and You, A Joint Journey. Brought to you by the Room Team from albertarheumatology.com, your trusted evidence-based suite of resources available 24-7. Straight from Alberta, but for folks around the world. Our hosts today, Arthur Reitus and Sarah Lucas, technical producer, John Eiffel, and our executive producer, Stephen Keats. While we work hard to maintain the accuracy of our information, we accept no legal responsibility for any errors or omissions. Remember, always check with your own physician first. Join us next time for another deep dive.